Okay, so let's look at this next one. <clears throat> Two designs for a beam are to be considered determined. Which one will support a moment? So we're giving the moment 150 kilonewton meters with the least amount of bending stress. So two different shapes. Um, let's find the bending stress for each of those. <coughs> and we'll talk a little bit about the stress distribution uh, for the beam. But mainly let's figure out which one will give us the least amount of bending stress. Uh, where is the maximum maximum bending stress uh, at the the maximum bending stress will be at the very top or very bottom right the very top or very bottom if it's symmetric the very top will have you know compression or tension and the very bottom will have the same magnitude but it will be the opposite what if the top is compression the bottom will be tension so forth so we need to find the stress at the very top of each of these shapes if we had a moment of 150 all right <clears throat> so we know for bending stress uh, we need m y over i uh, for y and i we need the neutral axis but these are symmetric right these are symmetric the top half and the bottom half are symmetric so the neutral axis is just right there in in the middle of each of these so we don't have to find the centroid, uh, but we aren't given, and we do need to find the I. So let's let's look at the I for shape A. Can you can do this differently, but I like to think of this as one rectangle, two rectangles, three rectangles. So I'm going to find the I plus AD squared of the first shape, the I plus AD squared of the second shape, the I plus AD squared of the third shape. So that top one right there, its I is one twelfth. B H cubed, <clears throat> but that would be the I about a line through the middle of that rectangle. We need to move it, so we need to use the parallel axis theorem and add A D squared. A, it's a 15 by 200 uh, shape. And how far do we need to move it? How far do we need to move it? Well, uh, this is 300. We need to move it 150, but then also that little bit right there. <clears throat> the 7.5. So we need to move it down 7.5, then another 150. 157.5. You see, that would be the D distance in the parallax system that we would need to move it. All right? Plus <clears throat> this middle one right here, 112. Uh, B, 30. Height, 300 cubed. Plus a D squared. But what D do we need to move it? Uh, it is actually already at the middle, right? The middle of that rectangle is also the middle of the whole shape, so we don't have to add. There is, <coughs> there is no AD squared, or technically, you know, the D is zero right there for the AD squared, so don't worry, worry about parallax theorem for that one. And the bottom one is exactly the same as the top one, so let's multiply that times two. So for shape <coughs> A... So I'll say I for shape A, uh, a very large number, 2.1645 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the 4th. All right, so that's the I that we would use for that one. Let's go ahead and find the I for shape B. <coughs> I for shape B, uh, that top rectangle right here, 1 12th B, H cubed. But I need to move it, let's see, the area is 200 by 30. What distance D do I need to move it? Well, that was the I about there. I need to move it down 15 plus another 150. <coughs> All right, down 15 plus another 150. So that would be the I plus A D squared. The bottom is exactly the same. I would just have to move it up 165 right there. Up. Oh, sorry, I do not cube that. And if I kept up my units, that would I would have shown shown me I, for millimeters to the fourth. I only need to square that. All right, and then the middle is one twelfth b h cubed, and I don't have to add a d squared because the, the i of that shape, <coughs> sorry, the centroid of that shape is the centroid of the <coughs> whole shape. So the i for shape b would be. 
3, 5 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the 4th. All right, so everything else the same, <coughs> the larger I would lead to smaller stress, correct? The larger, it's in the denominator of the my over I, so if I divide it by a larger I, this one is larger, then it's going to have smaller stress. So all things the same, I, I would choose shape B because it has a larger I, but all things are not exactly the same. This Y is slightly different for one shape and another shape. If I'm talking about the distance Y that the very, very top is, um, you know, over here, the distance Y will be 165, but over here, the distance that Y is to the very top would be a different, it would be a larger 180. Let me just calculate both stresses uh, for shape A and shape B, <coughs> and then we'll compare them. So, for shape A, the stress on the top, the MY over I, the M is 150, what did we say? Kilonewton meters. 150 kilonewton meters. Now, there are better ways than I'm going to, but I, I get stuck into a rut. I like newtons and millimeters squared. Right, I like newtons and millimeters squared. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change 150 kilonewton meters to newton meters. So 150,000 newton meters. But then I'm going to change that meters to millimeters. So, so it's another 1,000. A very large, very large number. You know, there are better ways to do this, but I like newtons per millimeter squared. So now I've got Newton millimeters on top. Um, the Y, what is the largest? We want to find the very top. The Y value at the very top would be 165 millimeters. That's the distance <coughs> from the neutral axis to the very, very top. All right. And this um, would divided by, I'm looking at shape A, 2.1645 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the fourth. And so if I look at all those units, I, I end up with newtons over millimeters squared, <coughs> which is MPA. 114.3 MPA is the stress on the very top or the very bottom for that moment for shape A. But for shape B, the stress on the top, MY over I, 150,000 newton meters times a thousand, that's a unit conversion. Uh, its Y for the very top is 180 millimeters <coughs> and its I 3.6135 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the fourth. This would be, this would be 72.7 MPA. So which one would have the least amount of stress 72.7 right there. If you want to sketch the distribution <clears throat> on this beam, if we're looking at it from the side, uh, we would have a stress. So did, did it say if whether this was a positive moment or a negative moment? Uh, if, if we're assuming it's a positive moment, then the very top would have a compression of 72.7 MPA and the very bottom would have a tension, 72.7 MPA. It would decrease linearly to the neutral axis where Y is zero, and if Y is zero, then the stress is zero at the neutral axis. So that would be the distribution. The stress decreases linearly uh, towards the neutral axis. So there we go. So if you were designing this beam, why might you want to use this, this shape right here? Well, because given the same moment, <coughs> we've got less stress because of the shape of that cross section. It, um, it handles the bending <coughs> moment better. I, the mo area moment of inertia, is actually a measure of an object's amount of area away from the axis. It's a measure of an object's resistance to bending. So the larger the I, the, the more resistant it is to bending. And so for the same moment, you'd have a smaller stress uh, for that shape.